my lovely imps, it's time. It's time for a little treat. This is the cookie in between everything else we've been doing, which you can see all on my channel. But this right now is a treat. You see, I am a really, really, really big fan of Elden Ring, okay? I really love FromSoft games, and I really liked Elden Ring, okay? Like Elden Ring, I went really hard into Elden Ring, okay? Let me just real quick, let me just tell you how hard I went into Elden Ring, okay? In Elden Ring, I currently have 437.6 hours of playtime. I have every single achievement except for two. And I am, with my character, standing right at the edge of being able to get that last two achievements. It's just one of the endings that I haven't completed yet. And I've got all the other ones, okay? I love Elden Ring. I have I've professed my love for the FromSoft games, but Elden Ring was especially important to me. It was the first FromSoft game where I really felt like I had learned how to be good at a FromSoft game, and it felt amazing. And I'm going to be playing Elden Ring on stream in the fairly near future. Currently, we're playing through Dark Souls 2. But just three days ago, we finally, finally got a trailer reveal for the Elden Ring DLC. Now, there's so much I could talk about about this DLC, but I want to just react to it together first. So without any further ado, let's watch the Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC trailer together. Let's do it, shall we? Let's do it. Peggy 16. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. In that forsaken place. Ooh, loving it. Blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. They are truly faithful. They were never saints. They just happened to be on the losing side of a war. Listen. Would it really be a FromSoft game if you didn't get the suck? If you didn't have a worm grab right over you and just suck you dry? Would it really be a FromSoft game? For real? Truly, Lordship Sanction, in one soul, bereft of light. I presume you, too, are keen to know just what kind Mikola is doing here. Hippo bros! We got the hippo bros! Those stripped 
of the race of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. Come now, touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. I got hyped, okay? I got hyped. I let it happen, okay? Now, to be fair, I do trust, you know, I trust FromSoft a lot. I have, I have yet to be even remotely disappointed with any FromSoft product. But I, I, I'll admit, they got me. They got me with the hype, okay? We got the hippo bros. We got a bear roar spell. We got a, uh, we got one of those, uh, uh, those, those, parade dragons that's alive and it's got a million legs and arms underneath it. Wait, I missed Wormy Boy. Where's the Wormy? Where's the little blue Wormy? I want to see the little blue Wormy. Where's Wormy? Does anybody know? I missed it this time through because I was, I was getting excited again. But I know there's a little blue Wormy and it's so cute. I wanted to show it, but I can't remember where it is in the trailer. There it is. It's here, isn't it? It's somewhere in this area in this like, look at this shit. So this obviously, this is like, a, like this is like the final fighting area of, of Sekiro, which is really cool. Somewhere in this area, I think, I swear to God, there's like a little wormy dude. I don't remember where it is, but it's a little wormy guy. It's so cute. Oh, was the blue wormy guy just a screenshot? I'll find it right away. Yeah, here's the blue worm. We got him. We got the blue worm. He's so beautiful. My boy. My boy. My boy. He's so cute. Oh my God. He's so adorable. I want him to be my friend. The worm was in a promo picture. Okay, I thought it was in the trailer, but I guess it's just in a promo picture. But uh, it's looking, I'm not gonna lie. It's looking good. and. If we combine it with what we know from the interviews, the information that we have is that um, there are like, I believe eight new weapon classes. So there's eight entirely new weapon types. They didn't reveal how many weapons total, but there are eight new weapon classes. Um, one of which is like hand-to-hand -hand fighting. So you get fist and kicks that you mix together, which is amazing. Everybody's been wanting that in one of these games forever. Sekiro had a hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, combo set that you can get, but not a full weapon set. And so it seems like they're finally gonna do that. The size of the DLC is uh, geographically about as big as Limgrave, which is a huge portion of the map. It's uh, Limgrave is basically the largest area of the map content wise it's got the most stuff in it and the most uninterrupted space and they're saying the dlc is about that size which is incredible they've already announced that there are multiple legacy dungeons which the legacy dungeons in elden ring are basically the biggest chunks of the game and there are going to be more than one in the dlc which a lot of people thought there was only going to be one because the legacy dungeons, there's like, what? Uh, I don't know how many, how, let me look up how many there are in the base game. I'm, I'm forgetting the exact count. We got, hold on, let's take a look at which ones are considered legacy dungeons. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six official legacy dungeons in the core game of Elden Ring. And they are have announced that there are now going to be multiple more in the DLC, which is really exciting. Um, it's, it's really exciting. And they've said there's going to be uh, a, they have changed their approach towards the normal dungeons. 
Uh, a lot of people didn't like how um, in the base game, a lot of the, the miniature dungeons that you encounter, um, they kind of felt like you were going into like an instance or whatever, and you kind of were. In this one, they said there's going to be a lot more of a flow between the overworld and the dungeons, that you're going to dip in and out of the dungeons more. Uh, they're going to be less like a little distinct dungeon that you go down into, finish, and then leave. And they're going to be more weaved into the environment, which is, of course, very exciting. Um, the uh, enemy types that they're showing off look awesome. And, of course, there is a lot to bite into with regard to story. Um, of course, we have the introduction of Mesmer, the Impaler, who is that red, that beautiful red guy with the uh, with the snakes, this guy right here, um, love this guy. Look at his little snake! It's so cute. Oh my god, I love him. He's beautiful. I'm excited to figure out exactly what his role is. Um, he he. Uh, there's already been people starting to put stuff together because, as it turns out, there are some hints in the game. Uh, in the base game that could not have made any sense until we had this information. There is a tomb called a Tomb of the Impaler, and there's a little spirit out in front uh, that was in the base game, and it's been there all along, but nobody knew what it meant. Um, there was just a little spirit there that said that uh, that um, Marika, the like main goddess deity of the game, um, that... Uh, uh, that that she had a child an unwanted child and nobody knew who that was supposed to reference so everybody sort of assumed it was just a tidbit um but now we have a name for that unwanted child and also apparently the location of his tomb um there is of course so much to grasp people are very everybody feels a lot of people feel very validated by the fact that that we now know that you will grab Mikola's hand out of the cocoon to travel into the new zone. They've explicitly confirmed that that's what's going to happen. A lot of people figured that that was going to be where the DLC would begin, that you would walk over there. But there's a lot of other interesting details as well. Um, there's a shot here that I've uh, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of hubbub about, which is you see this is the, this is a different angle. And in fact, it looks like an earlier version of the Erd tree. Uh, we can see that this er, this version of the Erd tree is actually bleeding golden sap still, which means that this era, wherever we're going to, uh, is likely in the past, at either uh, during or somewhere around what was called the Age of Plenty, because um, you, the Age of Plenty ended when the tree stopped giving its blessings. So th there was a point in history where the the drops of dew or the drops of amber from the tree were like magically infused and the pe people could just stand under the tree and catch blessings in their hand. Big globs, big globs of sticky blessing right under their hands and maybe all over their faces too. Um, but yeah, um, it's not in the past. Miyazaki said so. Are, are we sure about that? I don't think he said that. I don't think he said it's not in the past. Um, I, I, I mean, it's possible that it's not in the past and that we're just witnessing something like a like something else. I think he said it wasn't in an alternate dimension. I don't think he said it wasn't in the past. Um, did he? Maybe I missed that. It's present. Hmm. Um, uh, maybe. M that's kind of odd. I will say that all most uh, Dark Souls DLCs have involved time travel he said it's neither past or future hmm okay well maybe i i theorize that it was likely uh in the past but i guess it's not um most uh, D dark souls ones have something to do with time travel often with lo time loops specifically well not loops i guess but like uh weird time distortion i guess it's possible i missed that part so my bad but that was my theorizing looking at this. But the other thing that people have pointed out is this: these sheets hanging from the top of the tree, which is very, which is a very interesting detail. There appear to be curtains 
or veils hanging down from the top of the tree. Now, there's a lot of imagery in the game that, that this resembles. There is um, the, the, the bedchamber of the queen and goddess Merica, which has a similar uh, veil depicted in the art uh, of, the, of the sort of bedchamber of like, uh, that's been seen, but there's also this repeated concept in the game of the Baldachin or Baldachin, I don't know how it's pronounced correctly. Um, which is basically, it is a veil, a specific type of veil that goes over a bed, and that is specifically associated in the game with um, the uh, the, pre the priestesses of death, these, these women who lay with the dead and breathe new life into them, um, and especially with one of the sort of uh, side stories that was a little bit less fleshed out in full, um, Fia, the deathbed maiden, um, who, or deathbed companion, I think is the term that they use. Um, and her story, she has a pretty significant story in the game, but it isn't, it feels like there's details missing. And so a lot of people are thinking that this is a reference to something to do with the realm of death or the gods of death. So, yeah, the deathbed compa companion. Baldekin? Baldekin? Baldekin. Okay. Um... But yeah, uh, it's it's looking pretty good. There's tons of stuff that people have been grasping into. Obviously, a lot of the enemies that we see um, in the trailer uh, are uh, they have elements that are associated with a an era of the past uh, and also a sort of faction through uh, a faction um, which is called the Crucible. In Elden Ring lore, the Crucible was uh, both an era and a sort of a group of people. Uh, there were a bunch of people who swore themselves uh, to the Crucible. Uh, and the Crucible era referred to uh, a time in which basically uh, a great tree, and many people theorize that this is an earlier version of the golden Erd tree that we see, that the great tree came before the Erd tree, and perhaps the Erd tree as we know it grew out of the great tree. But during the Crucible era, um, the, there was, uh, the tree itself was producing an abundance of new life and life during this period s seemed to m merge together in different ways. Um, and there were of course many who were loyal to the crucible. Um, the crucible, uh, these sort of worshipers of, um, of all associated life that was associated to the crucible. Things that were associated to the crucible are beasts, misbegotten as they're called, uh, which are like chimeric beast creatures. Some of them are partially humanoid and partially beast. And there are all kinds, and of course um, the omens. The omens are associated with the crucible. The omens being uh, human children that uh, uh, you know, human children that grow horns, uh, lots and lots of horns, um, because they're chimeric in nature. And so the crucible seems to be some sort of primordial life-giving force. And we see a lot of that. Oh, most of the creatures that we see featured in this trailer have the, the horns that the omens have that are associated strongly with the crucible, which at, it is also explicitly stated in Elden Ring that the horns of the crucible were at one point considered a blessing and as time moved on and a new religion took over they became to be considered a curse so it's very interesting uh i am no lore expert okay i know a lot about the lore of this game but i'm not an expert but those are some of the things that stood out to me and i will admit i'm quite excited for it um that's all i'm gonna say for right now but uh, i encourage you to go check out the incredible glut of lore analysis, trailer analysis videos. If you're into Lo Elden Ring, there's a lot of really good stuff. And uh, it's not your usual sort of uh, empty react fare. You're gonna get something like what I've done here or even better if you go and check out some of this stuff. I know that uh, Tarnished Archaeologist, who I absolutely love, does some of the highest quality videos about Elden Ring and the other FromSoft games, did a video. Vati Vidya, very famous, did a video. Uh, Smoff Town did a video, which is great. But uh, 
anyway, there's a lot to enjoy right now. Uh, this game has been announced that it's going to be coming out in June of this year. So we don't have to wait very long before we'll get to play it and see for ourselves. And hopefully, if I keep to my gaming schedule, we'll be able to do that on time for us to play Elden Ring and the DLC all at once together on stream. That would be very exciting. Oh yeah, Zully the Witch! Zully the Witch did a great video on it too. So that sounds pretty cool. Uncle Gumbold said, did you see Tarnished Archaeology's video, uh, First Thoughts video? He says he's getting parasitic tree vibes. I can see that. I mean, honestly, I could see that. But also, it's kind of strange to me because it's got all these ashes falling off of it. And to me, this does not look like the Erd tree as we know it. The Erd tree as we know it, um, it has like bark on the bottom and then it turns into like a golden... Uh, uh, like, it turns golden the higher up it gets. The bottom stump is very, like, it looks like a normal tree, a normal giant tree. Um, and then it sprouts up into the big golden column that we know. And this, that part appears to be gone. And there's these other branches which look like a normal tree, but they have this sap pouring out of it. So I don't know. That's that. Uh, that's part of the reason why I thought that this was, like, an, uh, was going to take place in some point in the past before the um the golden erd tree as we know it took root also i'm very partial to the theory that the erd tree of the like base game of elden ring is a parasitic outgrowth that the crucible was the original great tree um and that something happened to it and uh, out of it grew what uh, what emulates the appearance of a tree, but is actually not a tree. Um, and in fact, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a whole video that I've plugged a million times that I encourage, and it's called, uh, it's by uh, Zeostorm, and it's called, is Elden Ring, it's like Elden Ring about, is, is Elden Ring about mushrooms? I think that's what it's called. Elden Ring and mushrooms? Let me look it up. Uh, I, want, I don't want to get the title wrong. The, yes, <laughs> the insane mushroom theory explained. Wait, he changed the title. That is not what the title used to be. The insane mushroom theory. Okay, all right, I'm going to plug this in here. This is my last plug that I'll do, okay? Bam, bam, bam. All right. There we go. There we go. The the mushroom theory is has been the one that I have been most partial to and convinced by, which is that the Erd tree that we know is not actually a tree. Uh, and I think there's a lot of evidence that, that points to that, that, uh, that it, it, it seems to be some kind of fungal outgrowth. Even the branches look more like mycelium of some form. Um, uh, uh, it looks distinctly different from the bottom parts of the tree, which we encounter as we go deeper into the world. But anyway, um, yeah, that's enough for now. I don't want to spend this into too long of a segment. I've already rambled a bunch. If you enjoyed this and you want to be here for when I play through the rest of the FromSoft series and Elden Ring and the Elden Ring DLC, make sure you press subscribe down below. I'll admit, they got me hyped. Uh, try not to get too hyped about stuff, but they got me. So, smack that subscribe button.